Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Tito RC, and this is part four of the blob build. And in this episode, we're going to be focusing on getting the model covered. As you can see, I've made good progress on that. We've got to glue the tail surfaces on, and then we've got to glue all the uh, control surfaces on, so ailerons, elevator, uh, and that sort of thing. So, without further ado, let's get stuck in. Okay, everyone, welcome back. As I said on the intro, this is episode four. And uh, mainly this is going to be about covering the model and just finishing it off. So once I've covered it, getting things like the uh, elevator and ailerons um, connected using push rods, etc. Um, but the one last little bit of building that I've got to do is I just need to put some triangular section on the fin um, just to add a bit of extra support. Uh, and what I want to do with this is I want to put this triangular section on before I cover it. Um, so I just need to get this flush with the bottom, uh, get it glued in place along here, and then I need to shape it as well. Uh, I'm gonna taper it in at the front and taper it in at the back. Um, so, and then after that, I'm gonna cover it. So I'll glue, I'll glue the triangle to the bottom of the fin um, and then cover that as one piece and then obviously cover the tail. Um, before I get started though, obviously you'll see that I've got a different camera angle. Normally I've got the camera set up from the side so you're looking across my building board um, but decided to try from the top this time um, so please let me know in the comments whether you think this is a good angle or whether you prefer um, the the old one where it was uh, where I shoot it from the side obviously it's always tricky just to get the right um, angle for people but um, yeah I thought I'd give it a go this way um, so I, I really would appreciate if you could let me know whether you prefer this new way or the old way. Okay, so all I really need to do to get started is, you can see here that it's kind of straight here and then it angles upwards uh, on this front section. And that, that's so it's in line with the fuselage because um, this bit fits along the top of the horizontal section. And then the bit that's sort of angled up goes on the fuselage and the fuselage is slightly higher so that's why it's angled like that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to fit the triangle i'm going to glue it on there like that um, to where that center line is where the pieces are joined together and then i'm going to join another a separate bit on here which is going to follow that bit uh, and then as i say once i've glued it i'm going to uh, sand it to shape so I think that's probably the easiest way of doing it it will potentially it, it I might be able to get it to sort of bend around that angled piece but I think it's uh, going to get a bit messy if I do that so I definitely think I'm better off just um, doing it in two pieces so um, first thing to do then is I just need to sort of mark this there where that join is and then we'll just get that cut with the razor saw okay so that's just literally going to glue on like that flush with the bottom um, so all I need to do is just run a bit of thin CA into that okay let's just get this rear section glued on where the end grain is just a little dab of CA and then we'll just run some more down there And once that section's dry, we'll go for a piece along here. We're going to have to put a very slight sort of curve in that um, just to follow the profile, but that's fine. And then I'm going to sand this, this front bit down anyway. So um, it's going to be uh, sanded, like I say, profiled at the front there. Tapered is the word I'm looking for. So... Let's get this back piece on. And then what I can do is just sort of bend it round like that. Just put a little bit of a curve on it so it just is flush with the bottom. Okay. 
and that should be good. So what I'll do is I'll just get the other side done the same and then um, I'll show you what I'm going to do to get it shaped. Okay, so I've got that all glued up uh, and what I'm doing now is I've just marked um, on the triangle section, hopefully you can see there and sort of there, I've actually marked it um, an inch in from the leading edge of the fin and the trailing edge of the fin, which I know an inch is unusual for someone from the UK, um, but it just seemed about the right distance. And then I've taken my razor saw uh, and I've just cut that off there just to create that taper. And then I'm just gonna finish it off uh, with a sanding block just to get that nice and smooth. But that's kind of, well, let me just get this side done. So literally just following that line I've drawn with the razor saw. Like that for the front. Just so it gives it that, it's quite hard to see on the camera, but it just gives it that taper front and back like that. Uh, and then I can get that shaped, as I said, with a sanding block. And then that's basically ready to cover then. And then that gives me a nice area when I go to actually stick it on the fin, I've got that extra bit of surface area there to uh, epoxy it in place. So I'll get it sanded and then we'll have a look. Okay, that's just given that a light sand in. And as you can see, I've just got it tapered in nicely there. So, uh, I mean, fairly simple job that, but it kind of just follows the shape of say the wing tips and the rounded edges of the uh, horizontal stabilizer. Um, so that's all ready to be glued on. So last little job I've got now then is I'm just going to go over all the parts. So have a look at the fin. Um, I actually think the fin's okay, but it does have, you might be able to see there. Yeah, you can just about make out there that little dent. Um, so there's just a few little areas like that. I've just got a couple of dents. So I'm just going to go over all the surfaces. Um, the horizontal stabiliser and then obviously wings and fuselage and just using some model light filler just fill these in and then I've just got some nice fine sandpaper this is 400 grit wet and dry I'm just going to run over all the surfaces with this ready for uh, covering so I'll get all that done and then basically we're going to start covering okay the time has come to start covering it uh, I'm going to go with two colours I've got this film from McGregor. Uh, I've used this film before and it's actually a pretty good film. Um, it has a backing on it as well, which um, I like because I tried the Ritmax film and that is nice film, but it doesn't have a backing on it. And I prefer to have a backing on because then you know that it's completely dust free. Um, but this is really good value, this film. Um, so I think a roll about this here in the UK is, um, I think it's about, 10 pounds so it's not bad at all and then i wanted day glow yellow and the only company that seemed to do that was um, aura cover so i've got this aura cover day glow film which i've never used before but i've heard that this stuff's very good um, probably one of the best apparently on the market um, this is about 40 pounds a roll so it's a lot more expensive um, the plan is going to do the wings and horizontal stabilizer in the yellow and then the fin and all of the fuselage is going to be in black and then what I'm probably going to do to help me see it is put two black stripes down the bottom of the wings I think for the top I'll just leave it <laughs> excuse me leave it as it is um, but I've got the blob logo which I think is black Yeah, well, it's sort of black and white, so that'll be fine on, on the wings that'll stand out. So I'm going to put that, the big blob there on the wings. Um, so at least I can probably be able to see that okay. But the main thing is to be able to see the stripes from the bottom so we know which way up it is. Uh, and first thing I'm going to cover, so I'm going to put the fuselage to one side and the wings. I'm going to start real simple. Um, and I'm just going to start with the hatch. <laughs> um, so I'm going to get that covered in black. I, I won't film that because it's not going to be very interesting. Um, then 
I will get the fin covered. Obviously I've put this, I've done it slightly uh, differently. Um, I think in the instructions it says to glue it all together and then cover it. Um, I've decided to cover it, uh, sorry, glue it on once I've covered it, which might be a mistake, but we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I'm gonna cover that in black, get this covered in the yellow. Um, actually, what I'm gonna do, sorry, is get the fin covered and the top hatch, get this covered and elevators and air runs in the yellow. Then I'm gonna use my fuselage template, which I've got to put to one side. Uh, and I'm gonna cut the fuselage size out of the film, um, which was a great tip from uh, um, NGL modeling in the instructions. Um, they recommended before you actually glued the fuselage together to take one of the side templates and use that to cut your film out. So that was a really good idea because now we can just slide the, the film onto the side of the fuselage. But I'm gonna get the top and bottom fuselage done first in the black, then get the sides done yeah, and then we'll, well, the wings will already have done by then. And then once everything's done, that's when I'll glue the tail on. So I'll measure this up, cut the film away where I need it to be. We'll get that glued on and then obviously do the same with the fin as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna start with this hatch um, and then I'll probably just run some high speed film of me uh, covering the other bits. So we'll get stuck in. Oh, just one last thing. I've changed the camera angle ever so slightly. So I've actually mounted like a flexible arm now because um, before it was in where I'd got it sat up here in this new position, it was it was pretty difficult to move it because uh, I kind of fixed it to my shelf. Whereas now I've got it on a movable arm. So it means I can sort of angle it, have it a little bit higher and also angled back a bit. So I think you can see a bit more of my workspace now. So hopefully, uh, that looks okay. And as I've said, um, normally I film from the side so you can see across my building board. Um, but obviously this time I'm trying from this new position um, over the top. Um, let me know what you think, which one you prefer. I'd appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna get stuck in. Okay guys, well that's the fin and the hatch all done. Um, the fin's gone really well actually around this um, these support pieces here, a bit difficult to see. You can kind of see if I hold it in the light there like that. So it's the film's gone round there really nice. And then on the bottom, I've only left a tiny little lip of the film. So it gives plenty of bolster there. So I can epoxy this onto the tail. Um, so yeah, that's all done. Gone on nicely. It is a good film, this uh, McGregor film. I do quite like it. Um, so a couple of things that I should have said at the start was um, just got an old rag. Actually, this is an old T-shirt. Just put my iron on, which does work really well. It, you know, you don't need a stand or anything like that, and you can just plunk it down. Um, I don't use a sock because I tend to find a sock a bit more difficult to use, if I'm honest. I prefer to just use it like that. And then in terms of tools, I've got a sharp, really nice sharp pair of scissors, which I tend to use actually more than anything. Steel ruler, of course, and then brand new blade on my scalpel. And I'll probably change this a couple of times whilst I'm covering this model because um, it's always best to have a really nice sharp blade. Um, so that's what I use. Um, seems to work pretty well for me. Rudders or fins are always a bit tricky because you're always going to have a seam. Um, somewhere on the, on the fin, whether it's on this side or that side, because at some point you've got to overlap one side with the other. Um, so you can kind of see, you probably can't even see it on the camera, but there is a bit of a seam there. I'm just going to run over that with some rubbing alcohol just to get rid of any adhesive that's seeped out from under the film. And that should more or less disappear then. You won't really see it. Um, you do have to look pretty closely to see it anyway, so it's not like a, a major issue. So that's that done. So now we're gonna switch up to the Aura cover. I'm gonna put this to one side now, the black film. And then I always also save some scraps where I've not taken the backing off. Actually on that one I have taken the backing off, so I'll probably get rid of that. But this one I haven't taken the backing off. So I'll keep that piece because you never know where you, you might wanna patch something up. And it's always just handy to have a, a leftover piece like that. Let's have a look at this Aura cover then, see what we've got.
Okay, well, first thing to notice is that the backing paper is much thicker. In fact, it even is like paper. It also weights quite handy as well, just to put down, stop it from rolling around. Um, so then the first thing I'm gonna try covering then is this elevator. I'm gonna try and cover this. Rather than covering this in two halves, just cover it in one. So we want so if I was to cut it here, obviously that would only just give me enough. So I want to allow myself a reasonable amount. So I sort of cut it along there. Just get another weight on there and get my knife. And let's just double check the width for that because again we want a bit of an overlap on each end so that is probably going to be fine about there probably way too too much but i'd rather have a bit too much than not enough there's nothing more frustrating cutting the film and realizing that you've not got enough so I'm going to put it about there and then we'll, uh, we'll cover it as one thing, like I say, and I'll just join it at the back here. So let's get this backing paper off. And it is, it is almost like paper. It, it's like wax proof paper. It's probably why it costs so much money. They probably spent most of the money on the backing paper. But Let's see, let's see how good it is. Okay, let's tack that on at one end. And we'll pull it really tight, tack it on down here. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is cut the corners. Like that. Just so it's going to fold around there. Now that there is going to be a bit tricky when we come to do that, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Trim that corner, and now let's get this stuck down. Keeping it flat because I don't want to introduce a, a warp into it or anything like that. It's very satisfying. It's time consuming, but it does give you a nice finish and it is very satisfying, especially when you see you've got some wrinkles and things and then you just go over it with the iron and they just disappear in front of your eyes. It's uh, quite impressive. And this stuff's actually been around for years. I mean, I can remember I used to use solar film years ago when I used to do it Unfortunately, they're not around anymore. But as I say, the McGregor film, if you want a budget film, seems just fine to me. Okay, so that's got that lapped over there. Let me just shrink this down here. Then what I'm going to do is we've got to pull this We've got this profile to do. So I'm going to pull that round like this, and then sort of go around with the iron, turning the actual elevator as well, not just moving the iron.
Okay, that's got most of that done. So now, I think that's looking pretty good. I know it's only the elevator, but it's nice to do it all in one piece. And again, there are a couple of tiny little areas where I can tighten it up around this leading edge. But of course that you're not going to really see because that's going to be up against the uh, horizontal stabiliser. But it does, once you hold the heat on, it does get rid of all the creases. Which as I say, is very satisfying. Okay, well first impressions of Aura cover is doesn't really seem any different to the McGregor stuff I've been using. It's slightly thicker, shrinks well. But I wouldn't say it was worth four times as much. But there we are. Okay, I'm gonna leave this alone now. I should be doing that one thing all night. Um, so there we are. So next thing that I'm gonna try now is uh, I'm gonna crack on and get the uh, horizontal stabilizer done in this fluorescent orange, yellow even. Right, so I made really good progress yesterday. Um, so got the horizontal stabilizer all covered and finished. I've just marked it up B for bottom there, but this is all gonna be cut off anyway, so that's fine. Um, and I got the elevator done and then little tip, uh, I just remembered before I covered the horizontal stabilizer to, I covered the uh, elevator first. So then I uh, just off, offered that up to the horizontal stabilizer and marked where the hinges are with a Sharpie and I can just rub these off with some uh, alcohol or whatever afterwards. Um, because obviously if you, uh, you, you can just see those marks there. Obviously if you covered both things and you forget to do that, then you have to hunt around for where you've put the hinge slots. So that's all done. And I can transfer, obviously from the elevator, I can transfer the marks onto here now as well, or at least just cut it s straight off that. So next job I'm gonna do, I've just been able to think about the sequence of doing things. And I'm going to get the wings done now because I think I'll put the the, the joint up of the, the film right tight up to the fuselage. Uh, and then when I come to put the fuselage sides on, I'll lap those over the wings slightly. So you'll have a little sort of seam going along here. And I think that will be the best way to do it rather than doing it the way around, putting the fuselage side on first and then having the film sort of flipping up. I think it's better to have it coming, sort of going down, if that makes sense. Um, so, going to get the wings done now. I'm um, going to start with the bottom. So, we'll get the bottom one covered, this one, then this one. Uh, and we'll lap it up and over the top. And then, of course, then when we do the top, everything is going to be lapped underneath, so you won't see the, the joint of the, the film. Um, so yeah, that's my uh, my next job. Okay, so I've got this wing panel done on the underside, and that's gone on nice there, as you can see. That's all stretched and wrinkle-free, which is great. Um, so I'm gonna get the other underside done and then start on the top side. Uh, I'm not gonna film it, though, anymore because um, it's actually really difficult to, um, because especially because the fuselage are large and wings are all in one, is to try and film it get it in the frame while actually trying to cover it. Um, I'm getting myself in all sorts of positions to try and keep it in the camera and it's uh, it's not that exciting anyway. Once you've seen one side done, it's all the same. So I'm gonna leave it there for the wings and I'll come back when I finish the wings and then I'll just show you um, the pieces I get cut out to um, using my template to, um, to start the fuselage. So um, yeah, I'll see you when I've completed this. Okay then, so just to give you a bit of an update on where I've got to with the covering. Uh, apologies, by the way, if you can hear chainsaw or whatever going in the background. I think one of the neighbours is doing some gardening. Um, so covering's going well. The wings are completely covered. Can't quite remember where I got to um, in the last clip, so apologies. 
Um, but just as a recap, it's been a few days since I managed to get in the workshop, but got the underside covered in the black now as well. So I've covered the underside first, and this is the thing with covering. You have to kind of think how you want your sort of overlaps and seams to go. And what I'm thinking with this is I want the, the bottom done first, so then I can lap, I can put the sides on and, and lap that underneath. Um, but then the top, when I come to do the, the top, I want that to lap um, down the sides. So bottom on first, then sides, then we'll do the top. And then finally I'll do the front because I want the front to be lapped over all way, always round um, because obviously that's the direction of the, the wind um, and the air is going to go that way. So I want, I want the lapping to, to follow that basically. So I'm now at the point where I need to get the sides done. Uh, and this is the template that I cut out from some cardboard, which was a, a great tip in the instructions that they recommended. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is just got my Sharpie. The only problem I've got is it's not going to show up very well on this black film, um, but it does have a backing, clear backing here. So obviously I'm going to draw around this and then I'm going to cut around it with my scissors, um, oversize obviously. Um, and then uh, we're going to, get that onto the uh, onto the model and uh, iron it on so so I'm going to get cracking with that um, I'm not going to film it but I'll, I'll just get on with it and then I'll show you once I've got um, all the covering on and basically I'm ready to start uh, sticking the tail, tail surfaces on. Right well I'm pleased to say that the covering's all done um, it's one of those tasks where I do enjoy doing it but it's also can be quite stressful and it's one of those things when you don't do it very often and you haven't done it for a long time like me then uh, it can be a bit challenging but obviously this is a nice model to cover because it's fairly um, straightforward i'm really pleased with the way it's come out though i love the this uh, black and fluorescent yellow color scheme uh, really looking good and the uh, side panels or side pieces went on really nice using that template um, i've actually managed to get a really nice tight line around the uh, wings so where the fuselage joins joins to the wing. Um, let me just adjust this camera a little bit. But I think what I'm probably going to do is I'm still going to put a like a, a black band just around there just just to knee it up a bit but it's not essential because uh, as you can see there it's managed to get it finished pretty nicely. So really chuffed with that. Um, just while we're talking about the covering, I mentioned that I was using Aura cover for the fluorescent yellow and then the black is just the normal one I use, which is the McGregor covering. The Aura cover is about three or four times the price, um, but they were the only people who got the yellow in. But what I will say is um, it does go on nicer, I, I think. Um, so it shrinks down a lot better, um, I would say and um, sticks possibly even sticks a bit better um, also i like the film i think i mentioned before um, you can get some film in the uk by ripmax which is even cheaper than the mcgregor and it doesn't have a backing um, and i said i don't like that because then you can get dust on the back and that sort of thing but I, for some reason with this black film i had a real issue trying to get the um, film backing off and so in some cases it was on so tight when you pulled it off it was actually pulling the pigment off um, don't know why that was I've not had that problem before but the aura cover actually comes with like a, a wax paper backing I've actually saved some here because I thought it, these were like when I pulled off a couple of the wings um, I thought I'd save this because it's handy for you know mixing epoxy on and bits and bobs like that but that gives it a real quality feel um, and of course it's really easy just to take that wax backing paper off um, the other advantage of that wax backing paper is you can really easily mark it up uh, with a pen a sharpie or something and obviously you can see it really easy um, on the paper um, so I don't still don't think it's worth you know three or four times the cost but you, you can tell the difference I guess uh, in in the quality but I still think the McGregor stuff for the price you can't really um, go wrong with that so that's that um covering's done so next thing i'm going to do now i'm just going to do this tonight before i uh, go in 
Um, it's actually Father's Day tomorrow, so my wife is taking our little boy out for the day so I can spend the day in the workshop. Um, so, but what I want to get done is I, I just want to get the horizontal stabiliser glued on. So what I've done is I've marked the uh, centre line on this. I've marked the centre line on the back of the fuselage, which you won't see because it's black. Um, but I've marked that there. And then let me just see if I can get this in the camera. Uh, and then I've also marked out and cut out the, uh, the film. Uh, so you can see just the raw bolts are underneath there. And obviously that's just going to sit on there. I'm going to mix some 30 minute epoxy up. So it's a good bond. Uh, plenty on there because obviously we don't want this coming off. And what I've done is I've actually had my uh, spirit level on it. Um, and if I push it down firmly on here, I can get the uh, the bubbles slap bang in the middle. Um, so I've just got to play around with that a little bit as the um, epoxy dries, uh, just to make sure it's nice and level. And then I've measured as well um, each side, just to make sure that's even, just to try and get it as, you know, obviously we want it nice and straight and horizontal with the wings. So yeah, that's, I'm, I'm gonna get that done just now, leave that to dry tonight, and then hopefully come back tomorrow. And I think tomorrow I'll be gluing the fin on uh, and getting the elevator and aileron hinges or surfaces hinged and, and fastened on. Uh, and then uh, I'll probably take a check then, see how long this video is. And I might make another one after that, just to finish it off, setting all the radio gear up, mounting the motor, those sorts of things. Um, but um, we'll, we'll see how we get on. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna mix some epoxy up and, and get this glued. All right then, so horizontal stabilizers glued on, nice and strong, that should be okay. Um, so next job really, I'm gonna get that done now because then I need to put it to one side. But um, So I've left this overnight, so this is the following day. I've gotta get the vertical stabilizer glued on now. Um, so it's going to be the same procedure. I'm just going to mark out where that's going to be, cut the film away, and then mix up some epoxy. I might actually mix this, put this on with five minute epoxy so I can just hold it nice and square, get that glued on, put it to one side. And then what I'm going to do is start getting my aerons hinged. Um, so I'm going to crack on with that first, and then I'll, uh, I'll show you what I'm doing for the uh, aerons. Okay, so just at the stage of gluing the hinges into the elevator. And uh, now, obviously I've already cut the slots before I covered it, so I've just um, uncovered those with uh, my knife. I don't think you can really see that. And then the hinges you get in the kit, uh, which are these, and then that focuses, these little sort of special CA wicking hinges. They're like furry almost, um, so they're quite good. And obviously just put those in halfway. So there we are, that's kind of in halfway. Just had to open it up a little bit for some reason again with the blade. And then in terms of gluing them in, um, thin CA and then highly recommended, almost essential really, is one of these really thin little applicators, like needle applicators, because otherwise you can end up getting the CA all over the surface. And then it's just a case of letting it wick into the gap there. Do both sides. And because, it, as I say, these are like furry sort of hinges, it really does wick in. And absolutely locks these in place really nicely. Now, I don't tend to pin these which um, I know it's a bit, some people would pin them uh, and I may live to regret it one day, but um, I don't always find it necessary to do that with these CA ones. So I'm just gonna put these in and there we are. Well, that's got those locked in solid. I mean, literally you cannot pull those out. Um, I do always do a check anyway before I fly before I get down to the field, I'll check that the surfaces are nice and strong. Um, 
so that's that done got the two ailerons to do obviously it's going to be the exact same process so we're going to get those done now uh, and then ailerons i can get glued in position elevator i'm just going to i've just got to get the um horn not the horn the clevis fastened on the other thing i'm going to do as well i'm just going to screw the horn in um, i've already drilled the holes for this anyway i'm just going to get that on the elevator now so it make life a little bit easier um, and then yeah and then once those are in position that's going to wrap this video up so i'll show you once i've got all those glued into position okay well here it is on the bench and we're almost there so we've got the ailerons glued in, into position now um, I've got the elevator glued into position um, and I've hooked that up. Um, I did have to, at the back, had a little bit of a mess around with that. I had a clevis at the back, but it seemed to be binding quite badly. So I've changed it for a ball joint um, and that's working fine now. And I've got good movement on there. Uh, the only thing I've done, and I don't know whether you can pick it up on the camera. Um, I'm really annoyed with myself. When I put the slots in the area that's going to take the control surface so either obviously the wings for the for the ailerons or horizontal stabilizer for the elevator i always cut them slightly bigger so i've got the ability to put the surface in place and then move it left or right to get it lined up and for some stupid reason i obviously just wasn't concentrating had a brain fart whatever i haven't lined this up so i've got it's a millimeter about a millimeter over on this side and therefore a millimeter short on this side and it's so frustrating because all it needed was just a little push and it would have been all lined up um it's i mean it's so minute it's not worth worrying about but these sorts of things really wind me up it winds me up when it was so easy to um sort out and um and i just didn't do it but uh, there you go these things happen um obviously like i say it wasn't focused and as soon as you go in go in with the ca it's it's instant like you're never going to get the hinge out after that um, the only way you do it is to cut it and start again put new hinges in in different locations and reposition it but for the sake of a millimeter i'm not going to do that but i'll forever look at it and be annoyed with myself but there we are um anyway looking really good uh you can see also i've got the top hatch on here so that goes in really nicely it's actually a really really strong fit i didn't think it uh, would be as strong as it was but it's it's solid there's no way that's coming off there's no magnets it's just purely using the um sort of flex in the uh, the thin plywood and the tension that that creates with two uh, tongs at each end and that's it's really solid so that's good so that's going to wrap it up for this episode hope you've enjoyed it um if you haven't subscribed and you're into RC fixed wing, particularly building your own things and bolts, a um, bit of nitro, obviously this one's going to be electric and all that sort of stuff, then I'd really appreciate it if you'd help me out and uh, hit the like button and of course hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. Um, so, uh, and if you've got any comments, stick them in the comments uh, and I'll always respond to you. And if you hit the bell icon and you're a subscriber, then you'll get notified when I bring the next episode out and that's going to be the final build episode and that's literally where we're just going to be getting the battery tray glued into place getting the ailerons hooked up getting the receiver in radio gear tested working motor mounted on the front and getting it ready to fly so uh, until then i'll see you soon for the next one